Uh, today, uh, by the title of thumbnail, you guys can tell that I am officially final, finally dyno tuning my S15. Uh, we've had to do a couple things to get ready to this point. Uh, if you watched my last video, you would have heard I had like an ECU debacle. And I was going to throw the car on a link because it's actually on an ECU Masters. And uh, unfortunately, I had some technical difficulties yesterday um, because I didn't have enough information on the car and the setup to actually complete something was causing a bunch of issues and I'm gonna keep it broad because it's just a whole mess but it's all fixed now I spent my whole day doing it I didn't want to film it and now it's late the next day but we're good we're good I want to dive into this thing and I want to get a video out today so we're gonna do it so it's back on the ECU Master ECU uh, I got a stable base map we're good to go and we're gonna tune it like that so all right let's get this thing on the dyno What do you think? How much am I making today? Uh, it's pump gas. To the moon. To the moon? <laughs> All right, good attitude. I'm uh, hoping it's very linear, you know? It's all one can really hope for. It's a nice, <laughs> linear feel to it, you know? <laughs> yeah. All right, so if you guys don't know anything about my engine, it's just a not shop SR20, uh, fully forged, uh, future fab manifolds, Gradient intake, supporting fuel system, supporting ignition system, an aftermarket trigger system, which is something you should have on an SR20, because the factory cam angle sensor is old technology and it kind of sucks. Um, and then the big thing is we have a G25 660 turbo. We're on pump gas, so we don't really want to push our lock, especially on a turbo four cylinder, on a small frame turbo like this. 400's kind of where it probably is gonna start knocking its face off. We're gonna keep it around there, but that should still be really fun. The big thing here is the power delivery, not the peak number today. Yeah. But we get to see how the power band comes in and how hard this turbo is going to hit. And that's the exciting part of it. That's the best part about a G-Series. I mean, a 400 horsepower on a street car is fun, so. Oh yeah, that's more than enough for the street. Let's get this thing running and, uh, well, start doing some pulls. LZ. Yes. What are you doing? Trying to, we, we're really bad at organization here and I'm trying to find the file to compare for your car. <laughs> so, uh, Adam's S15 has a very similar engine setup. Uh, the big difference is the turbo, right? I have a G25 660, mm -hmm. he has a G25 550. So I think we're both very curious to see how they compare to each other. Yes, sir. And we're gonna hopefully find out right now, so. This might be my car. He made 464. 400 torque. 400 torque? That's nice, that's a good, well, well how much boost are you running? It's modest. Okay, so Adam's tuned on Ignite, uh, you know, a, a race ethanol. I am on pump gas. Mims for the pump gas. So uh, <laughs> we're gonna hold back a little bit because, so even though the engine's built, uh, knock is knock. So uh, gotta hold back a little bit. First pull, I think it's making like 12 PSI. We're gonna find out. 12 this PSI, what do you think? 305. 40. 340? I'm gonna go 340. On pump gas? Series. On yeah, you're right. 320. Sean, 320. I'm gonna say 305. Okay. I set my over boost a little too tight. How much boost did you hit? It's six. Wow, it hit 16 pounds. That was quick. That was quick. It made 16 psi at four grand. You got to make sure the boost controller is not doing anything uh, because the gate's definitely not that high. Yeah.
My number was closest. Damn. All right, so how much boost? Here's the thing. The the car. Okay. <laughs> Hold up. Here we go. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Try to explain it here. We got to figure out why it did that. Yeah. So the funny thing is, if you look, the, tor the torque curve is flat, yeah. which is always my goal, right? The, the, the flatter the torque curve, the better it's going to feel. The more linear the power band is going to feel. And linear. that that looks perfect. Like, look at that. Go look at that power band real quick. Oh. Like, that's actually the, a perfect power band. No, it's sick. But the, but the thing is, it made it accidentally. How's that? Because How just like you was it just like you would expect from that, the boost actually slowly ramped. Oh, uh, right? is boost creeping a little bit? Quite a lot. But, oh, yeah. But that might be... A yeah. saving grace to an extent. <laughs> we'll see. I mean... Well, you, so, your motor can handle it. Okay, so it made... At four grand, I got the 16 PSI where you would think it would stable out. Then it crept all the way up to... <laughs> 22 pounds. Oh wow! A boost. That's seven, six pound of increase. Mm-hmm. Over the course of what? 2,500. Did it all the way to limiter? Boost cut didn't happen. It should have happened, which is really annoying. Um, now this is the point where we go through the logs and see if it's an electronic issue, why it boosted so much. If it's something the ECU commanded on the back end, or if it's not, then we have a mechanical issue, which means it's probably boost creep. So. I got the solution. Here, we have beautiful Artec manifold. We could chop two cylinders off for you. Make this for SR20. Yeah, yeah. No wastegate creep issues here with this puppy. <laughs> okay, I don't want to think it's a manifold yet, because. The future fat manifolds I have on the Black Z, it does me really good. I know it's different, but yeah, it's check, the same manifold. You, it's the same damn manifold. Check the tuner. <laughs> Sick. So uh, we checked the. Uh, so it's the <laughs> ECU isn't commanding the boost control at all. So can something be going on with it? Sure. So we're gonna bypass the boost controller, put it truly on gate, and uh, see what happens. About the same. Same, same. Same exact thing. Same exact thing. So that's not good. That's annoying. Oh, I hate that so much. Yeah. It's not ideal to not have boost control. All right. So here's the thing, right? The way it's creeping, it's actually a nice power curve. So I could bring it on the road and be fine. Yeah. But it sucks knowing you don't have any control over it. Yeah. So, so if we just had a big wastegate spring in it, right? Um, you wouldn't really see the, the boost continuously taper, right? The boost comes in really hard around 4,000 RPM. So if you had a big spring in it, it would probably go up and then kind of flat, you know, it kind of flatten out. Yep. So we know it's not just a big ass wastegate spring. So either that manifold is not efficient enough to flow to allow the wastegate to do its job, or there could be an issue with the wastegate. The diaphragm could be pinched. There, there's happens all the time. Tons of variables to say the least. Yeah, it sucks. It's in a real shit location <laughs> and everything's super hot. So. Yes. Do I ramp it in real hard and just make you some more boost? Or well, I mean, 350 where it's at, it's just like a nice street driving car. Yeah. What's the next thing that can cause boost creep, right? Retarding ignition timing. That will cause your boost to creep pretty damn bad. So we decided to pull out the timing light to, uh, well, reset base timing again to make sure we got it for the 80th time. And it's fine, but what we noticed is when we were revving the car up, the ignition timing is actually retarding, which we see commonly, we do, on older hardware. I do have this aftermarket crank trigger. Uh, but it still seems to be doing it, but there's adjustments in the e ECU for that. So we're trying to see if we have enough adjustment to make that work because we could definitely see that it was retarding timing, which would cause that, right? So uh, we're going to get this dialed in, do another pull, and hope that's it. All right, it's stable now. Sick. All right, we got stable ignition timing. It shouldn't, it shouldn't creep anymore. If it was retarding as much as we think it was, it shouldn't creep anymore. <laughs> well, that's good. And plus, I mean, it was making like 22,000 pounds. It should maybe make a little bit more than three, 350. So. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Looks like it. Yeah, it made a lot more power. <laughs> Made another 30 wheel. Alright, well, maybe 
made it a lot more power. <laughs> we basically put four more degrees into it. We put it, the right timing into it. Which it should have done, but still boost crept. It did? Yeah. It, what's crazy is it boost crept almost just as bad. Really? With four, no more, change. With four more degrees in it. Wow. You should see it drop like at least two PSI. Yeah. It dropped a PSI, which is what you'd see from, you know, if you were close to ignition timing. Yeah. But That's somewhat... That's at least leading us in the right direction. Yeah, but that doesn't tell us that it's ignition timing based. Yeah, no, you it's not, that trend. unfortunately. Yeah, so now we're back. I was certain, I was like, man, that was swinging a lot of timing, which it was. Three yeah. to four degrees is a lot of timing. Um, especially on pump gas. Three to four degrees is the difference between yay and <laughs> <laughs> So I'm happy we solved that. Um, still creeping from 14 PSI, which has to be the gate. You could see, you could see it in the curve that 14 PSI is def definitely the gate pressure. Then it creeps all the way up to 22 psi. That's a lot of pressure. That's, that's a seven lot of pounds creep. Of that's creep. so much creep. Yeah. And we're, not even, we're rubbing it to seven grand. Whole lot of creep. <laughs> uh, boost creep is like the most annoying thing ever. Yeah. So it has a turbo smart wastegate on it, which it's really hard to kind of pinch the diaphragms in the gate um, compared to a tile. Like tile, it's very common. And that's something you might see with a tile, but it's basically a straight pipe, three inch exhaust. So we know it's not that. The manifold in that turbo, I have the exact same one of my SRZ. The cams are bigger on this motor, but not enough. There could still be the internal of the gate is messed up somehow. It's hard on the turbo smarts to, I don't, I don't know where I'm walking to. Uh, it's, <clears throat> where is everybody? Everyone's home sleeping, drinking milk, watching Netflix. Where's Mike? Mike's working. Hello. You're always working. <laughs> my car is creeping. Still? My car is such a creep, it got banned from Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, whoa. What are you doing over here, Michael? My uh, my friends back home wanted to know <laughs> what it what it costs to import <laughs> some old Volkswagens, so I was checking on them. Bidding starts at a hundred dollars. <laughs> probably so, stay around there. So pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, when are you dropping more of these things? The waving light stick. These things are so cool. So it's just like our waving air fresheners, but they light the heck up. Yeah, they're super super cool. Right there. Oh my god! Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> that is so freaking cool yeah i love them i have had that's very, so gangster dude I, I appreciate it i've had very minimal time to work on the this second drop so i'm kind of scrambling to get all right mike's gonna drop these tomorrow afternoon <laughs> no 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 i'm hoping mid mid next week they're With, ready to drop. mid next week yeah give me a date the, the 22nd 23rd Let's all right say 23rd. 23rd those are going oh live. you're holding it to you're holding me to it for all sure because right. yeah, he's yeah, a gangster yeah, yeah. 23rd. All right, buy alive. a bunch of these so Mike can think <laughs> about buying Gandalf's for a <laughs> What's your website? Divinemedia.com. <laughs> it's now super late and I got to clean up and everything and then edit and you guys know how it all goes. So we had a little bit more time today, but uh, we had a lot of stuff going on. And uh, well, the next thing to do, like I said, is gonna pull the wastegate off and make sure that the wastegate is all good to go. Unfortunately, it's super hot and I don't have enough time, so we'll save that for tomorrow. So I apologize not having that in today's video, but uh, it'll leave some, uh, something to look forward to in the next video. So, um, man, uh, right now, it, at least it is safe and clean to drive on the road and enjoy it. I mean, it's funny enough that the power curve doesn't look that bad. Like, even with the boost creep, we have a really nice flat torque curve and obviously a very linear power band, which should feel pretty good. Obviously, I could definitely, if I wanted to, I could ramp the boost up, even though it's creeping, and make it more aggressive. But right now on pump gas, is a very nice curve. It's very conservative, I guess we could say, and it works. That's good enough for now to drive around and have some fun and actually enjoy the car around town for the next couple days before I head back to Connecticut. So either way, super cool to be on the dyno, super cool to finally push some buttons on this car and just see, yeah, it's so beautiful. Oh, we'll get back to CT, uh, get it right, tune on ethanol, do all that. And uh, either way, we got some progress done and any progress is good progress. So I will take that, but for now, I'm going to end it because I'm tired. I got a lot to do. So you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. And we'll see you guys very shortly.